Okay, welcome to week three. In this lecture, we're going to take a look at more uh, data frame features intended to help you uh, select and organize and analyze and plot uh, information contained in uh, data frames. All right, so we have already talked about uh, how to create data frames and how to add and delete columns and rows. We've talked about how to access subsets of data using slice notation or Boolean indexes or fancy uh, indexes. And we've taken a look at some basic statistics and plotting, uh, plotting functions. Uh, there is infinitely more to know, but we're going to try to deliver a, a, a useful one and a half hour set uh, of additional things uh, to help you do your uh, uh, analysis of data and uh, uh, statistics and plotting. Now, I want my uh, data frame, uh, when I ask to see a data frame, I want to see all of the columns of the data frame. I don't want to be getting these three dots in the middle of the columns. So I am going to do something that we did previously. I'm going to set the option called display max columns. To none. So this way. Hello. Oh, <laughs> Silly me, I forgot to import uh, PD. Uh, okay, so we will uh, we will take care of these uh, imports that we need to do very first thing. So I'm going to import numpy as np, import pandas as PD, and we'll also import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And now we should be able to do this option set for pandas data frames. There we go. All right, now to illustrate these additional features, I am going to make use of the uh, Allegheny County uh, dog license data that we were working with uh, previously. So let me create dog df for Allegheny County is going to be obtained from doing a pd read csv and the name of this file is fairly long so I'm going to type it on the next line down Allegheny County 2024 dog data dot CSV uh, you if you're interested in accessing this may uh, have to type a full path name for where you have stored the data you can download this data from the uh, lecture support files folder on canvas and in this CSV file the index column is the initial column, so that's column sub zero. Whoops, zero. And there we go. So now, if I ask to see dog df for Allegheny County, let me just look at the first uh, three records, three lines. Okay, so I have uh, for each. Uh, for each dog in here, I have the breed, color, dog name, owner zip code, gender, whether the dog is intact or not, and also what the age is and what the weight is. <clears throat> the age is in months and the weight is in pounds. Now, um, so this is one data set of information about dogs. Let's suppose that we went around Pennsylvania and got information about dogs in other counties. All right, so Butler County is just to the north of Allegheny County, 
And let's imagine that we went there and obtained, well, you know, we went there online or we went there in person or what have you, and we obtained a data set uh, that was identically formatted. Uh, same columns, uh, different license numbers, probably, but the uh, license number from Butler County is still the initial column. So I'm going to now read that data in to a Butler County dog data frame. Okay, and this file also is available in the uh, lecture support files folder. Now, um, I did go online to look for uh, information about Butler County dog license data and found that uh, Butler County is not as well set up as Allegheny County in terms of sharing this kind of information, uh, which makes sense because Allegheny County is a large and fairly well off uh, county in Pennsylvania. Butler County is much more rural and uh, doesn't have its data organized in a convenient way uh, to obtain. So frankly, what I did here was I simply made a copy of the, the middle part of the Allegheny County data and change the uh, dog license numbers uh, to a different range of values. Otherwise, the, the data sets are basically identical to each other. Well, why did, I, why did I do this? Often, you do have yourself, <clears throat> you do have for yourself a bunch of data that are in the same format and the question comes up, uh, how can I combine all of these data sets together into a single uh, data set that I can analyze? One way you can do this is with the concat function that the, uh, that's available in uh, uh, pandas, excuse me. You can, you can say pd.concat and then give an iterable. In this case, I've given a list. Uh, of two or more data frames that have identical columns, but in this case, differing numbers of rows. And what we will get as a result here is the entire contents of the Allegheny County dog data frame with the dog data frame from Butler County simply uh, concatenated onto the end. So however many rows there are in Allegheny County, we'll have all of those. And then however many count rows there are in Butler County, those will be concatenated onto the end. And I'm naming this thing uh, dog df for both Allegheny and Butler counties. pd.concat. OK, so dog df from Allegheny County dog D df from Butler County and there we are so I can uh, <clears throat> let's just take a look at uh, you know the top few lines from this actually it's it should be identical to what we saw for Allegheny County uh, because after all we have Allegheny County concatenated with Butler County afterward so if I ask for dog df ALBT up through row uh, up through but not including row sub three. Um, I get the same uh, information I had before. All right, so six seven four seven five four three is a cockapoo named Charlie, and up here uh, same thing cockapoo named Charlie. If if I look at the tail. I will see, let's again look just at three rows. I will see Oh ha 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 
I freaked out for a minute there. <laughs> uh, I asked for a slice of the top three rows, and I meant to ask for the uh, uh, slice of the last three rows. <laughs> okay, I can get the last three rows by saying, uh, give me everything from uh, row sub minus three to the end. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay. Now this uh, this looks uh, this looks a little bit different simply because the breed names uh, at the bottom of this uh, data frame are wider than the breed names for the upper part, and when you ask to see rows from a data frame, the the rows are formatted so as to make that. Uh, look reasonably nice. So notice how narrow the uh, rats. Okay, so notice how narrow the uh, column was for displaying the uh, uh, the breed names in the first three rows. Whereas here, if we ask for the last three rows, uh, we've got much longer uh, breed names, uh, Labrador Retriever, Doberman Pinscher, and so on. So the columns are spaced out more as a result. Um, but we do have the same number, uh, the, the same sequence of columns. We've got breed, color, dog name, owner, zip code, gender, intact. Uh, now, because of the increased width, not everything will fit uh, into single lines here, and so we've got the age and the weight uh, out at the end. And notice that the license number uh, sequence is just a different range of numbers uh, for Butler County. Although, as I said, um, I just cheated and created the Butler County data from uh, kind of the middle part of... Uh, Allegheny County. All right, um, so the uh, dog DF data frame from Allegheny and Butler, if I ask to see the shape, um, I see that it has 44,797 rows, which ought to be identical to the sum of the number of rows in Allegheny County and the number of rows in uh, Butler County which it is. Okay, so 34,776 for Allegheny County, uh, 10,021 for Butler County, and we just have the concatenation of those now. Okay, so that's what's called a vertical uh, concatenation of two data frames that have uh, identical columns, you know, same name, same order, same data types, um, but we just want to concatenate the rows of, uh, of one onto the end of another. In this next example, I have a file containing information uh, about a dog's, uh, about certain dog's veterinarians. Let me pull that up in, uh, in Excel. Let me expand the size of this. I'll increase the zoom factor so that you can see more easily what's going on here. All right, so here I have uh, certain dog licenses. These happen to all be for Allegheny County dogs. And I have the veterinarian uh, of each of these dogs. Now I'm, I'm assuming, and again, I just made this data up, but I'm assuming that each veterinarian keeps track of the uh, dog license of each of its uh, patients. That, that may actually not be correct, but let's assume that it is. So what I have here is, uh, for certain dogs, I have the name of the veterinarian that the dog uh, sees or visits. Uh, and of course, these are just made up. Uh, Bob the Vet, Vets of Oakland, Vets of Penn, Penn Hills, and so on. I want to show what's called a horizontal concatenation, which will show how I can add the veterinarian column 
for these specific listed dogs, uh, at the right side of the uh, Allegheny County uh, data. Okay, so the name of this data file is dog underscore vets dot csv, and that file also is available on the uh, uh, on Canvas in the lecture support files folder. Let me read that in. So vet data frame is pd dot read csv of dog underscore vets dot csv and just like the other two we have that the index column uh, equals zero now you can if you want you can use the actual name of the column you can say license as the uh, uh, index column I'm just going to stick with zero and there we go so here's my that DF. Let me just ask for three values. Okay. And the total size of this is pretty small. It's only got 10 uh, entries in it. I decided there wasn't much point in creating <laughs> thousands of fake veterinarians. All right. So here's how a horizontal uh, concatenation is going to look. Uh, once again, we're using concat. This time I'm concatenating the uh, Allegheny County dogs. All right, so this is going to be a data frame of the Allegheny County dogs and their vets. PD.concat. And once again, I give my list or my iterable of uh, data frames. Dog DF Allegheny and vet df the one important change here in this call of concat is that i have to specify that the axis i want to concatenate along is the columns axis <clears throat> or axis one um, by default the concatenation happens uh, across the rows uh, or axis zero so i'm concatenating across the columns now and when I ask to see just the first three rows of the resulting concatenated data frame notice okay now this is uh, spread out even more I've still got a uh, breed color dog name owner zip gender intact age weight but now I also have the vet uh, at the end of each of these rows all right so for my cockapoo named Charlie uh, I see that Charlie is a patient of Bob the vet and my German Shepherd Ellie is a patient of vets of Penn Hills I want to point out something else that's important here, which is that in the uh, in the data frame for the Allegheny County dogs, the licenses are in ascending sequence. There there are gaps because we eliminated all except for the fifty most popular non mixed breeds. So we have a license uh, for three followed by four five and four six and so on the vets on the other hand whoops if we go back to the vets notice that these licenses are not in uh, any kind of ascending order the the uh, dog licenses here are not in the same order that they would be found or that they are found in the uh, Allegheny County dog uh, data uh, but importantly when I do that horizontal concatenation the concatenations are matched up based on the indexes okay so here okay here we go here we have a license 
this is in the uh, this is in the the Allegheny County data. Here we have a license three six four seven five four six, and in the vet data three six four seven five four six has as the vet Bob the vet, and we see that that is what we got. We got Bob the vet. So here's our Maltese named Furby who has Bob the Vet as the veterinarian. So you don't need to worry when you're doing a horizontal concatenation of two data sets, uh, two data frames, you don't need to worry about making sure that the ordering of the indexes uh, in the two data frames uh, are the same. <clears throat> the, you know, that the ordering is the same. You do need to make sure that the uh, that the indexes uh, within the two day frames, uh, uh, you know, are 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 from the same, uh, you know, collection of possible values, uh, in order for the in order for the horizontal concatenation to work properly. All right. All right. Also, I want to point out that I only gave ten uh, veterinarians for dogs. But we know there's, uh, you know, more than 40,000 dogs in, uh, well, sorry, we're only looking at the Allegheny County dogs here. And we know that there's more than 30,000 dogs in Allegheny County. It turns out that if we look at the bottom of this horizontally concatenated data frame, that, in fact, most of the dogs will have uh, not available uh, as the vet. Okay, so for all of the dogs, a vet column has been added because of the horizontal concatenation, but only 10 of the dogs uh, actually have vets assigned to them. All of the rest of them are going to have these uh, NAN symbols, not a number, uh, which in this case, because these are actually strings, um, just means that this information is not available for those uh, dogs. Okay, so that's concatenating both vertically and horizontally. Next, we're going to take a look at how to count categories. Uh, this is actually a function that I demonstrated last week, value counts. Um, but I may not have emphasized one of the important features of value counts, which is that when you ask for the value counts, the results that are returned are always in descending order by by count. All right, so here I'm going to look at uh, the dog data frame for Allegheny County, and I'm only interested in looking at the dog name column. Let me just uh, ask for the top. Oh, let's ask for the top eight of these. <clears throat> okay, uh, Charlie, Ellie, Furby, Gizmo. Uh, I'm interested in knowing what the most popular dog names are. So I will ask for the entire dog name column. But then I'm going to feed that result into value counts. And I will get back a list in descending order uh, of the most popular names. In the slide, I only have room to display five of these, but here, let me display, uh, oh, I think we got room for 10. So let me display 10. There we go. And so these are the 10 most popular uh, names. Uh, Bella, Lucy, Charlie, Luna, Bailey, Daisy, Max. There's some surprises in here for me. I would not have thought that Luna was a, a particularly popular dog name, but I guess it is. <laughs> uh, and I did have a friend who had a golden retriever named Cooper. Uh, again, I would not have thought that Cooper was a really popular dog name, but apparently so. All righty. Now, when you get the value counts... Um, there I got the value counts just for a single column. 
But it turns out that you can request uh, multiple columns by using a, a so-called fancy index. Uh, we did an example of this, at least one example of this previously. And we can do value counts on the combinations of values that exist in these two columns or you know three columns or whatever so let me ask for uh, dog df for Allegheny County and this time instead of looking for just one column I'm gonna look for more than one column by using a fancy index I'm gonna look for gender and the intact status all right so the intact status is either true or false uh, if we have a uh, a male neuter dog then intact is false if we have a female spade dog uh, intact is false otherwise uh, true so let me just look at the first five results from these two columns all right so we've got uh, the index and then we've got uh, for gender and intact male false female false male false <clears throat> the possible combinations are going to be uh, female and false or female and true or male and false or male and true all right so because there are only two values in each column uh, that only creates a maximum of four possible combinations of those two columns. And if I feed that result, the, the, those two columns, into value counts, uh, value counts gives me, again, in uh, descending order, uh, the count of each of the four possible combinations. Let me do that so and actually I want to I want to do more with this information so I'm gonna create a variable uh, GI for gender and intact status so GI is going to get dog DF for Allegheny County of these two columns gender and intact Uh, and I'm going to get the value counts of all of these, and they will come out in descending order. So if I display GI, uh, I do get uh, all four combinations uh, with their counts. So uh, uh, female spade dogs in Allegheny County are the most popular uh, category. Uh, male neuter dogs are next, and then we have uh, male intact dogs after that, uh, and female intact dogs uh, after that. Um, you'll notice that here the gender is not shown. Uh, it just happens that the way this information is displayed if the uh, if the value of the initial index here, which is male, is going to be the same, then it's just uh, left out. So when you see a blank index, when you see a blank index, um, it means that the index is the same as the index above it. All right. So we've got female false, male false, male true, female true. One of the implications of what I just said there, I, 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 <laughs> I sort of implied something without, uh, without quite meaning to. Um, this result here uh, of the uh, gender and intact status uh, counts, this has what's called a multi-level index. The gender is part of the index, but the intact status is the other part of the index. If I display the index 
of that GI object, notice that it says that this is a multi-index uh, showing each of the combinations. So female false is one of the index uh, is one of the indexes. Uh, male false, male true, uh, female true. If you have a multi-level index, then you can use the first index. Uh, I'll say female here to select um, all of the possible values of the second level index uh, with, in this case, the, the, the counts. So among the female results, uh, female with false is uh, 10,291. Uh, female with true is 6,543. <clears throat> so within the female results here, I can do I can subselect on the uh, intactness status. I can say give me true here. Okay, so so among the female dogs, the ones that are intact, I get 6543. All right? So this is one way that I can apply my uh, multi-level index. I want to point out, though, that if you if you look at how this multi-index is displayed, uh, I have parentheses here. That's not just for uh, formatting. You know, that's not just to make make the multi-index look nice. Each of these items in this multi-index uh, is actually a tuple, and you can use that tuple. Uh, to select one of the values uh, out of this uh, data. So if I say GI sub, and then I give the tuple, whoops, I guess I didn't copy. So I'll just type it in manually, female, comma, false. If I give that tuple as an index, I get... Uh, the value associated with the with the category female false. All right. Now the the multi index is iterable. Uh, notice that uh, it's uh, it, it's not technically a list here, um, but it it is an iterable thing, and so I can loop through all of the combinations by saying uh, for each tuple in the index, let's just print the tuple. And there we go. So there are the four tuples that represent the four indexes uh, into my uh, GI uh, object. These Index values are what get used as the default labels for certain kinds of plots. If I take GI and plot it, uh, in this case as a pie chart, okay, so the plot was created. Now, uh, because I am using... Uh, Idle rather than Jupyter Notebook, uh, just because Idle fits easier on my, you know, in my videos. Uh, I do have to say plt.show. In Jupyter, you <clears throat> shouldn't have to do that. It should just appear. And here is the uh, the plot that I get. All right. So I've got. You can see. You can see each of these multi-index values uh, is used to label uh, one of the slices in here. Well, that's that's all very nice as far as it goes, um, but we also have we also have these actual count values 
uh, you know, female falls. Uh, the actual count of that is uh, 10,291. And we can see that that slice is proportionally larger than these other slices. But because we have these values available uh, from within this GI object, uh, we can, if we wish, add these counts into these labels. So let's take a look at how we could do that. Now, I'm going to close this. Okay, so uh, I previously did this iterable for t in gi dot index. And all I did was to print the uh, tuple representing the index. But let me instead print the value in the GI object using that index or having that index. So these are going to be the numeric values. Okay? So I can obtain these numeric values. Uh, these things are integers. And I can simply concatenate the, uh, the string representation of these integer values uh, to the end of the uh, tuple that they're associated with. And here's how that is going to look. I'm, if, I, if I am just looking at this particular category, female false, then the string representation of that tuple looks like this. The string representation of the value associated with that tuple looks like this and I can concatenate those two things together I can concatenate uh, the female false string and the 10 291 string together what I'm doing here on slide 13 is I'm also sticking uh, a string containing a colon and a space uh, in between just to make things look kind of nice all right so to develop these uh, strings that include both the index and the value associated with the index, uh, I'm building a list of labels using a uh, comprehension. I guess I lost my yellow highlighting somewhere along the way. So I'm, I'm doing a list comprehension here uh, to create a string for each one of the labels. All right, so I'm going to call this thing labels, and <clears throat> I want each label to both contain a string representation of the tuple, and then I'm going to concatenate a colon and a space just for, you know, prettiness, and then I'm going to also concatenate, oops, forgot my plus, I'm going to concatenate the numeric value of the number of counts for that particular category. Okay, and I've run out of space here, so I'm going to type my for loop uh, for each t in gi.index. Type my for my uh, for loop on the next line down, and so here are these revised labels. Uh, each label contains both. Uh, the index and the numeric value. I can pass that list of labels as the labels into my plot. Okay, now this may look kind of odd, but it, this kind of uh, syntax does show up a lot in Python. This plot function does have a keyword argument named labels. And by saying label equals labels what I'm saying is that the, I want the labels keyword argument to be set to the values in the labels array all right so let's draw, do this one gi dot plot once again the kind of plot I want is a pie chart pi pie, pie 
whoops, but I want to use my own labels. Labels equal the ones that I generated into my labels array. <clears throat> All right. That worked, and now I'm going to do plt.show. Again, I'm using idle, so I'm going to do that so I can see the plot. Um, on the slide here, because I was running out of room, um, I just attached that uh, semicolon plt.show as a, uh, as a second statement on that same physical line. And there we are. Very nice. All right, so you do have a lot of control over what you choose to put uh, in your labels, and you can use the uh, numeric values that get generated by the uh, uh, by the uh, uh, value counts. For some reason, <laughs> for some reason, I have a hard time remembering value counts. I always want to spell it as count values. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it backwards frequently. Okay. All right. So that takes care of talking about multi-level uh, indexes. Um, if I want to get combinations uh, of multiple column values um, and use the uh, uh, get the value counts of each possible combination. Okay, so the min and max functions, uh, I'm almost certain you already know about. Um, these simply allow you to find out the minimum value uh, within a column or the maximum value within a column. And these functions work not only with numerical columns, but also with uh, string columns like uh, the dog name column. So let's take a look here. I've got my dog data frame for Allegheny County, and I want to find out what the maximum weight is, or I guess minimum weight, of my dogs. And whoops, <laughs> we've discovered a bit of a flaw in my <coughs> code that assigned uh, possible weights to the various dogs. I've actually got some some weightless dogs here uh, by accident. <laughs> I've got some uh, some puppies that were less than a pound apparently and uh, got uh, truncated down to zero <clears throat> as the integer equivalent. So that's that's a dumb mistake on my part. Now the maximum is uh, 202 pounds. Uh, so that's probably some enormous uh, some enormous Great Dane. For dog names, I can ask for <clears throat> the minimum dog name. Now this means the dog name that comes earliest uh, in the ASCII character set order. And this appears to be some kind of typo. I'm guessing that the dog's actual name is Major, uh, but whoever entered the data accidentally put a dot and a space in front. If you look at the ASCII character set, you will see that the dot character, the period character, does come ahead of all of the letter characters. So it does make sense that that particular mistake would come out uh, earliest. And by the same token, if I look at the maximum dog name, that means the, the alphabetically last dog name, Shunka, this, this also probably is a data entry mistake because uh, virtually all of the dog names, if you glance at this data, are in all caps, all uppercase. And... It does turn out in the ASCII character set that lowercase letters come out ahead, uh, come out after uh, uppercase letters. Okay, so we appear to have two data entry errors uh, for our for our earliest name and our final uh, name. If you want to get more than just one value, 
you can instead use the uh, n largest or n smallest uh, functions. And you can specify as, a, as an argument how many you want to see. So if I ask for the Allegheny County dog, uh, I guess we're doing weights here, not dog names. Uh, weights. And I want to see the n largest. Let's look at the, uh, well, we have some space here. Let's look at the eight largest dog weights. All right, so I've got uh, 202 pounds. That was the maximum uh, down to uh, 185. So these are the weights of the eight heaviest dogs. And if I look at the smallest, weight dogs. I think we're going <laughs> to rediscover my mis mistake. And smallest eight. Okay. <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of uh, uh, weightless puppies in the data frame, apparently. <laughs> so that's, uh, <clears throat> that's an error, as I said. All right. Now, previously, we have dis we have seen that you can use this function called sort index uh, to either sort the uh, the rows in ascending or descending order by by uh, by the index type uh, or the columns in ascending or descending order. But it turns out that you can also sort the data frame according to values. Uh, contained within the rows or the columns. Now, realistically, almost always when you do a sort values, you're sorting, you're sorting the rows in order, and that's because um, you select the column that you want to sort on. All of the values contained within a column in a data frame have to be of the same data type. And so it usually makes sense to think about uh, sorting all of those same typed values in some kind of order. Technically, the sort value functions will enable you to sort the columns according to the values in some particular column, but that usually doesn't make sense because usually in most uh, data frames, the various different columns have different data types. And sorting values that have different data types is uh, is just not going to fly. So let's take a look at an example of sorting uh, rows. Here we're going to sort the rows in the age column. All right. So just as a reminder, in my dog data frame for Allegheny County, if I ask for the age column. Let me only show the first 10. <clears throat> These are the ages and months of the initial 10 uh, dogs within the data frame. If I want all of the dogs to be sorted in ascending order of age, I'll say dog df Allegheny County sort values. Whoops, not short. Sort values. Uh, and here I say by and the column that I want to use for my sorting. So by age. And again, I only want to see, let's say, the first 10. Okay, and, and these have been sorted in ascending order by age. And so I've got a whole bunch of one-month-old puppies that have been put at the beginning of my uh, sorting. Now, in addition to sorting on a single column, I can also do subsorting on another column as well. So in this example, notice that instead of giving an individual column, uh, I'm giving an iterable or a list uh, on multiple columns, in this case two. So I'm going to do my primary sort on the on ascending age, but then within each age level, I'm going to do a subsort on the weights of the dogs. All right. So 
Let's give this one a try. Dog DF Allegheny County sort values. And <clears throat> I need to hit the enter key to do the rest of it on the next line down. So by, and instead of a single column name, I'm going to create a list of two column names, age and weight. Okay, so now I'll get the dog data frame primarily sorted by descending age. Uh, but secondarily, for each level, for each age value, I will get the dogs subsorted by weight, and this is going to reveal my my weightless dogs once again. <laughs> All right, so uh, so I have a whole bunch of one month old puppies, <clears throat> and if they're sorted in ascending order by weight, I see that a whole bunch of them. Are, are weightless, <laughs> floating around in the air. Okay, so that's uh, min and max, and n largest and n smallest. Next up, there's a function called apply. Uh, and this apply, well, I should call it a method. It's a method for um, <clears throat> a data frame uh, column in this example. You can use apply to apply a particular function to each item uh, from that uh, uh, data frame, or in this case, this particular column of the data frame. These ages, they're currently contained in the data frame, uh, can be a little confusing because the ages here are in months, whereas most people, when they see a column named age, uh, are going to assume that it's actually the age in years. So I want to apply this two years function to each one of the month values uh, to get the equivalent age in years. <clears throat> Here is my two years function definition. Let me type that in. So I'm going to define a two years function definition that takes some number of months as its argument and that simply returns the equivalent number of years, which is just the months divided by 12. All right. So now I'm going to say dog df al sub age. Just give me the age column. Let's look at the top, uh, let's say, look at the top eight of those. So here are the top eight ages. This time around, I want to, instead of just seeing the age, <clears throat> I want to apply the two years function uh, to each one of the ages. So uh, instead of seeing 94, What's going to happen is that 94 is going to get passed in as the argument uh, to two year, uh, two ah, that's, that's a typo, two years, two years, and I will get back the equivalent number of years that 94 months uh, computes to, and apparently that's going to be 7.8 uh, and one third. Let me just look at the top eight of these. Okay, and we do get uh, 7.8333 as the number of years that's equivalent to 94 uh, months. All right, now it's common uh, after you do this apply to get these, these modified values, it's common to actually store those values into a new column. And that's what we're doing here on slide 21. I'm saying uh, into dog df al, let's create a new column, age and years. <clears throat> and the value that we're going to put in there. <clears throat> now, technically, this 
technically these parentheses here um, are not strictly necessary. I could just say, uh, I could just continue typing on the same line, uh, dog df underscore al age, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm running out of space, and so I'm going to use the open parenthesis here rather than using a backslash because I hate backslashes. So I need to continue my command on the next line down, and I prefer to do that using a parenthesis. Here we go. So dog df al sub age, which of course is in months, but I want to apply uh, the two years function to that. <coughs> Actually, in this example, I'm also illustrating the idea of using a lambda uh, instead. So a lambda is like an unnamed function. Let me do that. Uh, here also, I'm running out of space, but because <laughs> because I'm inside another pair of parentheses, um, I can just uh, type the lambda on the next line down. Lam lambda of x, the argument x. Uh, what the lambda of some value x is going to produce is that value over 12. There's the closing print for my la for my at the end of my lambda for apply, and the closing print <coughs> for the line continuation print, and zip. <coughs> Let me display both uh, the original age column as well as the age years new column. Let's look at the first eight. <clears throat> okay. Oh, uh, silly me, silly me, silly me. I forgot that I need to make this a, a fancy index. I can't directly access two columns in that using that notation. This needs to be a fancy index so that I can include multiple columns. There we go. There we go. And so now for each of these uh, eight dogs at the beginning of the data frame, um, I have the original age column showing months and the age years column, which is showing the equivalent number of years. OK, now <clears throat> we've taken a look at how to uh, divide up uh, uh, various categories, various combinations of uh, columns using uh, fancy indexes and uh, picking apart the multi-index that results. Another way that you can split information up according to different categories is to use this function called group by. And this group by function for data frames behaves very similarly to uh, the group by that appears in uh, SQL select statements. All right, so if you have a little bit of database background, uh, you will have have uh, have seen this concept in a different syntax. All right, so I am going to. Uh, uh, create a variable BG, BG standing for uh, breed groups. I want to split up my Allegheny County dog data by breed. <clears throat> okay, so I want a separate group for each breed. Now, I know in advance because of the way that this uh, data frame was constructed, that there are going to be 50 of these groups because my data frame contains, my data set contains, the 50 most popular breeds, excluding all of the various mixed breeds. So let me create my breed grouping. And if I now ask for the number of groups in this thing, I get told, yes, there are 50. 
what in the world is this breed grouping thing? What kind of thing is it? Well, I can ask for its type, and I get this uh, kind of frightening-looking description. It is a data frame group by object. <clears throat> well, that data frame group by object is an iterable, and so I can iterate through this group by object uh, to see each of the groups that's been created one group at a time. <clears throat> now, each group, uh, le let me first of all just, uh, just do an ordinary uh, iteration through that. If I say uh, 4x in BG, print x, <clears throat> I get this huge stuff. And if I scroll all the way back to where that all began, here we go. Even farther back. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, okay, here's my first group. It's a group describing American Bulldogs. Uh, I have the name of the group, and then I have a bunch of values for the individual American Bulldogs. And way down at the bottom, after I see all the columns, I get told, OK, for American Bulldogs, there were 244 rows in this particular group. So that, so that implies that there are 244 uh, American Bulldogs uh, registered in Allegheny County uh, during 2024. Uh, and then next up, I have the American Pitbull Terrier. Notice that there's a parenthesis uh, at the conclusion of the data about the American uh, Bulldog and an opening parenthesis just ahead of the American Pit Bull Terrier uh, uh, group. It turns out that, again, these parentheses are not just to make things look nice. The parentheses tell us <clears throat> that each of these groups is actually represented as a tuple. And so I'm processing each of these groups um, as a tuple on slide 23. Let me go all the way down here. <clears throat> so I'm using the multiple assignment idea to separate out the name of the breed from the data associated with the breed. Uh, the name is simply going to be a string, and the data is going to be a data frame. I will print the name. And after that, I will print the data frame. Uh, and because this stuff is a little awkward to look at, I'm also going to uh, display some uh, a separator between uh, each of the groups. And my separator is just going to consist of okay, a new line character, and then a bunch of stars, and then another new line character. So. Each of the group's blocks here will have this visual separation. And there we go. So let me just scroll up this last one. Um, in this last one, there are 1,153 uh, individual dogs. But by default, I only get shown the the first five and the last five individual dogs for this group. And this happens to be the uh, Yorkshire Terrier group. So the Yorkshire Terrier group is the last group, uh, the last breed name in, in here. Uh, and so for the Yorkshire Terrier group, I have a data frame that contains uh, all the same collection of columns as, as for our entire data set, but in this case, restricted to just the Yorkshire Terriers. <clears throat> okay. 
<clears throat> now, within that uh, breed grouping, uh, I can request the weight column uh, for each breed grouping. And what I get back from that uh, is is what's called a a series group by uh, object. Okay, so <clears throat> the series is going to contain uh, fifty uh, individual groups. I can compute, for example, the mean of each one of those groups. Okay, so BG sub weight is just going to give me the weight column, but actually it gives me this kind of frightening looking thing. This thing is an iterable. And if I ask for uh, the mean, I end up getting uh, not the mean of all of the dogs, but the mean of each one of the groups. Uh, let me, because uh, that's going to be 50, let me just show the top five uh, groupings of dogs. All right, so the average weight, the mean weight for American pit bull, uh, sorry, for American bulldogs is 44.32 pounds. And for American pit bull terriers, it's uh, 58.8. Uh, for Staffordshire terriers, 58.7. Uh, and so on and so forth. Now, each of these breeds here, when I request the the mean of the weights, each of these breeds here serves as an index. And so I can ask for the mean weight of one particular breed uh, by using the breed name as an index. All right, so BG sub weight uh, gives me uh, the weights of each of the 50 different breeds. Here I'm getting the mean weight of each of the 50 different breeds, but I only want the result for the American Bulldog. And there we are. So, uh, all right, so I know what the, what the mean weight of the American Bulldog is. Once I have uh, another thing that I can do uh, with these uh, different columns is instead of computing only the mean, I can use this, uh, this method called aggregate uh, to give me uh, multiple different functions <coughs> of that chosen column. So BG sub weight gives me back the the weights of the dogs on a group by group basis for each breed and if I aggregate that I want uh, several different functions all right this is going to seem a little bit odd because when I called the mean function I just said dot mean and that was it but if I use the aggregate function what I have to do is give an iterable in this case a list uh, on the names of the functions, and the names of the functions have to be represented as strings. And I know this seems kind of silly, but there you go. So what you got to do. All right, so now I have requested uh, for each of these weights to compute the count and the mean and the median uh, for each one of the different types of dogs. And basically these whoops basically these are going to be treated as the uh, column names uh, of the resulting values uh, all right I get told that that's squeezed I forgot to use head let me just display everything okay and so here we have uh, for the American Bulldog uh, the number of bulldogs, the mean weight, and the median weight, and then the pit bull terrier, 
uh, the number of pit bull terriers, the mean weight, the median weight, and so on. And I've got that for all uh, 50 of these uh, most popular breeds. Uh, so cane corsos are gigantic. I believe those are used on uh, South American cattle farms or something. Uh, also Great Danes are also gigantic and so forth okay all right so that takes care of an overview of several uh, useful mechanisms for uh, selecting out uh, various uh, rows or subsets of rows or groupings of rows uh, and then doing uh, statistics and or plotting uh, on the result. Okay. <laughs>